Before I bring up Rob, our next keynote, we've got a little video to uh, start it before I do the introduction with him. Check this out. So our next keynote, he began his tenure at USA Triathlon's Chief Executive Officer in March of 2011. As a matter of fact, he's the ninth CEO in the history of the Colorado Springs-based national governing body, which sanctions 4,000 races and connects with more than 150,000 members each year. He possesses more than 20 years of proven leadership experience, a proficient age group triathlete. He joined USA Triathlon from Courtview Capital Markets, where he's managing director providing mergers and acquisitions. Prior to Court View, he was with the executive, he was executive vice president of Octagon, Octagon leading operations in the global sports management and marketing firm. As a matter of fact, he held sole responsibility for the marketing division and led all acquisitions in business and began his career in sports working for the legendary David Falk, who took care of athletes like Michael Jordan and Patrick Ewing. He's a Wharton School MBA. He's a recipient and graduate of Center College where he was an All-American tennis player. Then he decided to get into a real sport and he finished Ironman Hawaii. Let's bring him up, the CEO of USA Triathlon, Mr. Rob Erbach. Thanks a lot. Is this, uh, can I walk away? Is this good? I'm on? Okay, great. So I'm going to walk this way. So first of all, I really applaud Triathlon America. Was, the, the energy in the room is impressive. Some of the initiatives that Jack talked about was impressive. So thanks to Jack and, and the uh, fellow board members. Uh, I think it's great for the industry and we look forward to, to partnering. And I was also impressed with the crowd this morning. Pretty active. I need the uh, clicker. Sorry, guys. There you go. So I was asked to talk about the future of triathlon and what USAT sees as the vision of the sport. Before doing that, I'd like to talk a little more about where we've been, where we are now, and then where we're going to be. Now, the sport certainly has evolved over time. You know, running, biking, and swimming probably took place back in antiquity. And I think as this video will demonstrate,
Now, I don't know about you, but I never get tired of swim, biking, and run imagery. There's something about the complexity of that, frankly, our, our single sport brethren don't share. You just don't see the same type of environment. You don't see the same type of collegial atmosphere. In a cycling or running race, when a competitor passes you, you don't necessarily cheer them on like you do in triathlons. There's something we have that's very unique about our culture that's tribal and powerful. Back to the history. Some important milestones in the timeline. 1974, the race right here in Fiesta Beach, the first triathlon in San Diego. 1979 was a Sports Illustrated story. I'll never forget it. It was May 14th. This inspired me and several others like me to say, what is this crazy event called the Iron Man that really resonated with us and was very powerful and very magnetic to drawing people to aspire? 1982 was the famous Julie Moss crawl in Kona on Wilder Sports that, again, drew more and more people into our sport. In 83, the predecessor to USA Triathlon, TriFed, was formed. In 1989, the ITU was formed. In 94, the first triathlon in Goodwill Games in Russia. In 96, was USA Triathlon was formed as well as triathlon became an Olympic sport. In 2000, was the first Olympic triathlon in Sydney. In 2003, Americans Barb Lindquist, Laura Bennett, and Sheila Torima were one, two, and four in the world rankings. 2004, Susan Williams won a bronze medal in Athens. In 2008, I think this is the first time I would say that you, know, you could say arguably that triathlon became more in the mainstream when Hunter Kemper appeared on the Wheaties box. 2010, there's three Americans on the podium at the World Championships from their pair category. Now, taking a look at USA Triathlon, it's sort of the evolution over the last 30 years. In the early days, it was about acceptance of the sport. Is this, gonna, is this a fad? Is it going to stay? Is it going to grow? If so, what are the rules? How do we ensure this? Now, I think as most of you know, USA Triathlon has its roots as an insurance consortium for race producers. Then, into the 90s, as the sport developed, as we became more of a business, as it became more mature, as people like Jack and others were pioneers with events and triathlon shops, as we held our first national championships and our Team USA were traveling around the world to compete in ITU World Championships, and the sport certainly became more evolved. Then the super growth in 2000. Our employees went from 15 to over 50. Our membership from 21,000 to over 134,000 in 2010. Our events from 640 to 3,800 in that decade. Okay, so now where are we already? Well now, it's I think more about driving value, about being relevant to our various constituency groups, about being more convenience, convenience to race, and about being more professional in everything that we do. Now, before we get on to where we're going, I thought I'd play a little bit of Jeopardy here. Do I have a sound? Okay, all right. Is that soundtrack again? The soundtrack. We got it? We'll try that again, okay. So now, here we go, all right. Now, we're gonna play a little Tripardy, okay? So. The, uh, the first category, if I can get this to play, okay, if everyone thinks they know the answer, we're going to raise your hand, and I have my wonderful assistant, Tina Wilmot, here, will choose you, and if you get the answer right, you'll get a little small piece of swag. Okay, so we'll start with Olympics for 100. So go ahead and click, we'll see the answer. The answer is United States only three-time Olympic triathlete, Tina. Oh, who, remember, get a phrase like a question, who is Hunter Kemper? Okay, go ahead. Okay, you click there. Athletes for 200, Olympics for 200, sorry. Okay, triathlon's only two-time Olympic medalist. Ooh. Oh, no, got a good answer. Go ahead, Tina. Okay, that's correct. Okay, we'll go to... Do we have an extra hat? 
<laughs> you know what I'm going to do, Rob? I'm okay. going to make sure it's on the who microphone. Is, who is Simon Doherty? You just, okay. Go ahead, collect the go, go Olympics for 300. I should. Okay. The, go ahead, Tina. This, I gave it away earlier. Who is Susan Williams? Correct. Okay. We'll move on. We'll go for that side of the room. Thanks, Barry. Okay, athletes for 100. The first non-American to win the Ironman. No, Babbitt doesn't count. Babbitt's no, ineligible. He cannot do that. He's ineligible. Nobody knows? On that side, nobody knows? Come on. Right nope. here. Nobody knows this side, then. How you going, mate? Who's Greg Welch? There we go. There we go. How you doing, mate? Okay, we'll go. Athletes for 200, please. Okay, one's in the room who's ineligible, but three of the 2012 USA Triathlon Hall of Fame inductees. There are six. One's in the room, so we'll recuse him from this. So we need, I need three. Do we have an answer? Who is Scott Tinley, who is Mark Allen, and who is Scott Molina? Per excellent, excellent. Okay, moving on. Athletes for 300, please. Okay, this is a great one. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, they got a hand right. Was that quick? Sylvian and Patricia. Wait. I'm going to give it to this Canadian right okay. here. Okay. The Pontus twins. Yes. Who are the Pontus twins? Okay. We'll go to the next category, please, which is these are events. Okay. This California, okay, events for 100. Go ahead, Karen. The California event traditionally has a naked aid station. Uh, what is the wildflower trap? Correct. Correct. Okay. Next one, please. Two more. Events for 200. This event includes jumping off boats and swimming with sharks. Well, I had a first hand over here. Wait, I think he's already had one, right? Okay. Oh, he he already, already had one. one. All right. Escape from Alcatraz. What is escape from What is Alcatraz? escape from Alcatraz triathlon? Correct. Okay, the last question for the final truckerty. Last question, please. Okay, uh, Barry is ineligible. So this is an event, old stagecoach. What I event? I don't even know this one. What is Boulder Peak? <laughs> <laughs> yes. What is Boulder Peak? What is Boulder Peak? Is that correct, Barry? That's correct. Okay, that's correct. Okay, next slide. I think it's the next slide, actually. Okay, I got it. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Final triperty here. Okay. You got to pay attention to this one. A little bit tricky. <laughs> Give that guy a hat. He said, what is a PC? Okay. Inspiration for the Iron Man. But we got to finish. 2011 Nautica New York Tri winner and Joni's husband. I'm looking for three first names. The last name is the same. Three first. Can anyone give me the three first names? The last name the same. Inspiration for the Iron Man, 2011 Nautica New York City Triathlon winner, and Joni's husband. Might have stumped the whole audience here. Oh my gosh. Bob Babbitt's got to know this. No, I got two names in my head. Nobody's got this? One, two, three. Okay, nobody's got it? Oh, we got One somebody down here? Che you got it, check? Right here, down here. Nope. No. Nope. Yeah. Okay. You got it? I'm going to give it up. You got one chance. Bob? Who is Collins? Well, first names. So, oh. first names. Who? John. John. Who Collins. is John? Who is, who is Ben? And who is Jim Collins, the author? Jim Joni Collins, Ernst. The author. Oh. Okay. We'll move on. <laughs> Stumped, you guys. Thanks for playing. Okay, so where are we now? I think it's important to talk about the future and figuring out where we are, where we want to be, and then how do we get there. Our current reality, you know, I think the strengths is our membership. The strengths is certainly the brand and the unique community of which you're all a part of is, again, I think unlike no other sport. I like to say that triathlon is the fastest growing adult participatory sport in the world. Can't prove that, maybe some of this research will, 
but that's my sense out there. Certainly we have the strongest adult membership of all national governing bodies. Um, you know, some of our weaknesses, we are not a spectator sport. You know, we're trying to we'll talk a lot more about how we can be a better spectator sport. Um, I don't think we have a real robust non-endemic sponsors. And certainly, um, we've experienced slower growth, at least in terms of our annual adult membership. Some of our opportunities are new, op new offerings, much more deeper, personalized member engagement, and more thought leadership in industry. Our challenges, there's a lot of competition we'll talk about. There's certainly economic headwinds. And I think our biggest risk is risk mismanagement. This industry cannot afford a catastrophic payout, a mishap in how we administer our insurance policies. How are we doing? Well, I, we kind of view, I like the least to view, there's three core metrics at USA Triathlon that certainly pay almost daily attention to, which are members, events, and clubs. Now, our membership, it's a fairly linear growth, certainly major growth from 2005 to 2006, an average of double-digit growth from 2010 to 2000, 2000 to 2010, but we'll see later that adult annuals at least has tailed off substantially. Our adults are growing about 2%. Still, you know, I would say that in most markets in this economy the last three years, flat is a new up. So I think we're pretty satisfied at this point with 2%, but we hope to gain more and more with new membership strategies and retention. Our youth, a lot of growth in the youth space, our future triathletes. Sanction events. This one's a bit controversial because I know that some of you race directors feel there are too many events. And as a result, there's too much competition. And we can certainly have that conversation, but it certainly shows the health of our industry as our events continue to grow. And clubs, as Jack mentioned earlier, clubs are the social fabric. Clubs often draw new members. If people find themselves you know, at a club happy hour, next thing they know, they're at the club track workout. Next thing they know, they're towing the line for a race before they know it. Now, are we mainstream? You know, I'm getting some mainstream press. I don't know, hopefully everyone saw the Ad Age article, which I would suggest sending around to all your business partners. We get more and more in the mainstream. Then I think, you know, if we can finally, this is probably the embodiment of mainstream. We actually are pretty pervasive on the internet, and I want to show something about the stuff triathlon said. Is this more aero or this? I'm doing way less volume now than when I was training for Ironman. You definitely got to get one of these helmets. So aero. Yeah, if you need some good ideas for swim sets, you can totally follow my blog. Oh yeah, you can read about all my runs if you follow my blog. This one's definitely better because it's carbon. I definitely need to get some carbon wheels. This carbon, right? I have a race this weekend, but it's just a B race, just a C race. I'm just gonna train through it. Tapering right now. I've got my A race this weekend. I'll be coming out of T1 so fast. I went out too hard in the swim. I was destroying the bike leg. I went too hard on the bike. I need to replenish my electrolytes. Check out these socks. They help with my recovery. I'm probably gonna do a run focused training block. It's kind of my weak sport. Yeah, I'm a weak swimmer. Yeah, cycling's my weak sport. Somebody told me this stuff tastes like carrots. I'm in my base phase. I think I peaked too early. Do you have the new Garmin? Everybody behind me, they were just like having a draft fest. I don't know why I shave. I guess because it looks good. I was gonna sign up for Ironman Wisconsin. For Ironman Arizona. For Ironman Coeur d'Alene. For Ironman US Championships. But I hear it's sold out. But I heard it's sold out. I heard it's sold out. But I heard it's like 900 bucks. My coach says I need to work on my swim mechanics. My coach says I need to get my cadence up. Yeah, that reminds me of my first Ironman. So, we, we, we get a lot of hits on YouTube on that. We, we're, we're definitely mainstream, and thanks to our, our friends at TriSports for that video. Some of the key challenges. Um, you know, I talked about this a little bit earlier, you know, a lack of fandom. You know, how, how, you know we're certainly not going to be the NFL or any of the major sports that have massive television audiences. We're getting better. Certainly, ITU format is certainly much more uh, television friendly. Um, you know, but we need to really focus on this, and we'll talk about this in the future. But, you know, something that I think we're going to leverage some technology to increase the experiences for your friends, family, and, and general spectators. Uh, there's certainly more increased competition, other type of events, all the mud runs and Spartan games, et cetera, and our slower membership growth. Now, you know, I think the embodiment of fandom is this, which is... Uh, You know, if that's something for us to aspire to, 
So if we can get there in NASCAR, that's really, you know, NASCAR is the opposite of us. They have 30 drivers and a trillion fans. You know, we have a trillion participants and very few fans. So we want to move. This is our goal. <laughs> Increased competition. Um, you know, we're, I'm paying a lot of attention to this. You know, we see the growth. I know some of you are involved. And congratulations with some of the Spartan games, the mud runs, et cetera. You know, are they, are they taking, competing for the multi-sport market share. There's only a limited amount of fitness and leisure time investments. It's something that we're looking at and looking to explore various ways to combat this. Now, this is a very important, you know, I showed earlier the total membership growth, but the issue is our annual adults in 08, 09, and roughly 010 essentially flat. Now, we had a decent uptick in 2011, but this is something we're spending a lot of time on. I think this is probably the key, most important issue uh, for the industry right now is if you have a flat adult membership growth, um, you know, it's, it's tough to grow overall. OK, so where are we going? What are our goals? Um, kind of view it in these three buckets here about building and creating resources. We fund roughly 62 programs at USA Triathlon, and we could always use more resources to do that. Second part is relevancy. You know, how are we doing, how are we providing value out to all of various constituency groups? And the third bucket is, you know, are, are we programs winning? Are our services winning? Are we doing well across the board competitively? Our growth strategies, it's about driving the market, leveraging the emotional connection, and enhancing professionalism. Driving the market through marketing, thought leadership, and sponsorship. And the marketing is primarily focused on our membership. Um, because more members means our customers are more vested. If they're a member, they're more likely to race more. If they're going to race more, there's going to be more registrations. If there are more registrations, all the race directors do better. If there's more people, the more ability to drive more sponsorship. We have more people swim, biking, and running. They need shoes, bikes, helmets, socks, videos, more industry sales, uh, more and more opportunity for coaches to help our athletes reach their potential. And just as frankly, a bigger market. It's much, it's not about market share. I really believe we can together grow the market with, through more membership. So in my view, more members, pretty simple, more profits for the entire industry. OK, so how do we do that? We know we want more members. And I think we need to be smarter in how we market to the membership and to all of our customers and constituency by segmenting the market. Meaning we know that intuitively there's newbies, there's enthusiasts. They may be they ski in the winter. They may go rock climbing. They may do CrossFit. They may race a couple times a year. And kind of the third kind of broad category would be competitors, those that get their competitive juices fulfilled through our sport. But I really want to take a much deeper dive. Because right now we know who's in our sport. Our database can tell you that we're 64% you know, male, what our peak, age, peak age, ages are. We know what they race. They do duathlon, short, long. We know how often they race. But right now, we really need to take a deeper dive and know why they're in our sport. Now, intuitively, we know that people come to the sport for a bunch of different reasons. Maybe it was transformational. It was a life change. They used triathlon to overcome sobriety. Anecdotally, I get several emails about people that have gotten off their adult onset diabetes medication through the platform of our sport. They wholesale fitness changes and lifestyle changes. Um, certainly, they've embraced the lifestyle. And we know that a lot of people are in our sport because it's their social life now. You know, they're, they're, their closest friends are the people that they train with at their local triathlon club. And again, some are in there to compete. Now, we know that triathletes kind of evolve through four or five of these categories, but they all have one thing in common. Now, everybody here remember their first race? Right? Was it a good experience? Maybe not. Maybe it was a bad experience, but something hooked you, and you came back to that sport. So all triathletes share their first race. It's like their first concert, something you're just never going to forget. You wish you could bottle that emotion and have that elation that's very powerful when times are troubling 
later in life and challenges are hard. But I think what it does is, since everybody's going through the same process, it's the same sense of unique community that's very, very valuable. And we kind of want to understand, take a deeper dive about why people do this. It's kind of a crazy thing. It takes a lot of energy and time. But there's something that draws us back that once you're in our sport, you may come in and out of the sport through various injuries, et cetera. But once a triathlete, always a triathlete, and we want to try to take advantage of that. OK, so how are we going to drive new memberships? There's a number of initiatives. We're launching a much more robust youth program this year. We're launching a national aquathlon series, trying to get 5,000 new kids into an aquathlon and then ultimately into a triathlon. We've got some small stipends available for race directors, so let me know if anyone's interested. It's going to be a very simple race, non-chip timing, participatory races in 30 markets around the country. Um, we're going to promote it, so again, and we're going to you know, continue to evolve that into part of our talent ID structure. We continue to look at other disciplines. You know, there's a number of people that, you know, hip injuries, knee injuries, that want to maintain their multi-sport lifestyle but feel like they can't, so we have Aquabike. Obviously, those that decide, you know, had a bike crash last year, don't want to be back on the bike again, Aquathlon. Those don't want to get their hair wet, we have Duathlon. So we continue to support these disciplines to make them part of our community. Um, this is an important one, especially in this year in 2012. Um, USA Triathlon is, certainly hasn't really integrated the Olympic marketing into their platform until now. Uh, so soon you'll see us integrating the rings into all of our materials. You'll see us appealing to the sense of, of patriotism. Most national governing bodies, you know, people are sending in their membership fees because they feel good about supporting an Olympic program. Well, I'm not sure that we've really done a very good job at that over the years. There are many of our members that probably don't even know that triathlon is an Olympic sport. So we look to spend a lot more energy in, in marketing the Olympic Association because ultimately it'll help us get more credibility, become more mainstream, and have the entire industry draw more corporate, corporate non-endemic sponsorship. Our brand. I mean, you know, er, inevitably, every time if I have on a USA triathlon, you know, logoed shirt, someone stops me in the airport, what's the conversation? Hey, are you a triathlete? If the answer is yes, all of a sudden I have a new best friend. I've heard his whole race history, his, his training, you know, his A race, et cetera. So I think it's a great sense of community, and we want to try to leverage that. And I think, that, again, there's something that you know, we'll do more and more of, and, and this video also depict, I think, what's unique about our sport.
So I went to a carnage fest and a triathlon broke out. Anyway, um, we uh, like the drama, and I think that's something that's pretty, uh, pretty unique about the sport, and we want to embrace that. Okay, some of our sponsor programs um, we think are pretty robust. We think from a national governing body, we have the, the best, best deal in town. We know that if our members actually take advantage of all of our sponsor programs, just in their normal purchasing patterns for their triathlon investments, we'll save around $700. It's a pretty strong value proposition. Cross-marketing, we want to partner with, we're looking at various uh, partners on membership, you know, including other national governing bodies and clubs to continue to, uh, to try to drive more members. Retention, um, it's a big issue for us. You know, we, uh, our retention rate is around 56%. So what that means is that roughly 45,000 members are, don't renew every year, and that means that we have to get 45,000 new members just to stay flat. So that's not sustainable. So you'll see a number of initiatives for us this year with regards to membership retention. Um, starting by, again, I think our value proposition is relatively strong. You'll see it becoming more and more louder for us. We are doing, in the midst of some first quarter research to understand you know, why members don't retain. We have a number of ideas and a number of anecdotes we haven't gone through a full, robust research process, which we're doing right now. Um, these are some of the questions, which I won't read, but we're trying to take a much, much deeper dive and be much smarter about this process. In that way, we can have some insights. You know, should we look at various membership pricing strategies? Should there be a non-competitive membership, maybe at a lesser amount for those that have some affinity but don't, are taking a year off from racing? You know, we will share those insights with the Tri America. I think we can all benefit. We can all benefit from repackaging our value proposition and farther driving our membership retention. Our current process, I think, is pretty good. You know, we, uh, we have a, I call the magazine subscription process, kind of beat you to submission until hopefully you renew. But we want to get much, much smarter. So we're trying to personalize this on an individual level, and you'll see more of that from USA Triathlon in the coming months. Also trying to recognize and reward members we mentioned the Hall of Fame earlier. Let me go back here. We have the Member of the Month. We have an Athlete of the Year ceremony at our national championships in, in Vermont in August. Uh, we give out very, all awards from, including race directors and doing this year, and various disciplines and various age groups. Uh, we're pretty proud of our communications. You, if you haven't logged on our new website, please log on. It speaks to you on a personal level. We know what race that you did. You'll see more and more direct communication. You know, how has your training going? I see you signed up for Ironman Louisville. Hope you need a coach, that sort of thing. So we're trying to provide more value off of, the, of our website platform. Uh, our, our newsletters really has an astronomical open rate. I think we're at, Chuck, what, 34% open rate on these newsletters? 36%. So we get great positive feedback with our newsletters. Hopefully they're informative. Um, our magazine, is granted the competitor has a pretty good magazine too, but uh, we're also pretty proud that we continue to improve our book. Our social media, you know, this is where all the action is. You know, our growth is, uh, is substantial and will continue to be so. We do a number of promotions, um, which is pretty interesting because I think this is the first time USA Triathlon has really tried to, to leverage its database and do so. When we started last year, it was very simple. We just notified people that they qualified for national championships. If you're the top 10% of a sanctioned race, you're eligible to compete in national championships for an opportunity to represent the U.S. at the IT World Championships. And as a result of this email, we had a pretty good problem. We sold out our race well in advance for the first time last year and had to go back and get six or 700 more spots. Um, you'll see another big initiative for us is to convert are one days, because remember, once they become members, they're more vested. We know they're more likely to race more. They're more likely to commit to being a triathlete, obviously more likely to use triathlon products and services. So we're working with our race directors to convert their one-day list into parlaying their one-day fee into a national membership, and we're vesting our race directors in doing so. 
This is a new initiative that we just recently launched. If you haven't seen this, we've launched a century club, which means that triathletes that have done 100 races will get commemorative items, so those two, three, four, and 500. And one of the reasons for this is, let's say you're out there, you've done 91 races, and you're going to retire. Well, at this century club, there's not a chance you're retiring, because even if it's a little patch or a shirt or a hat, believe me, you want that century club logo. This is what we did with our friends from Endurance Films that I think is very successful. We'll continue to look for more membership promotions to drive and retain more members. Our sponsorship. Now, I think it's very important for the entire industry because all your race directors know sponsorship is not easy. You know, any director of marketing has thousands of reasons they can spend proposals they can do with their budget. They have, you know, a number of opportunities and they have to make a decision. We as industry need to be better with our sponsors. So it's not just about putting up banners. We don't have enough spectators. We don't have enough. It's not about frequency or cost per thousand. It's about the brand and the experience, and it's about being better for our sponsors. So at USA Triathlon, our methodology is we want to understand the brand. We try to look at it from a competitive standpoint, provide some insights into their target audience. So then we can develop some objectives that if it's not measurable, it can't be an objective, that are realistic and obtainable. We want to come back to them with some ideas, serve almost as an agency function in doing so. And then finally, give them a post-event reporting that shows how we did. I think if the whole industry can get more professional, we'll be known as the right platform to sponsor. When, um, one example, I think a good promotion we're running now, again with TriSports, is $20. So you get $20 off from our friends with TriSports here with a new membership, and we're at $45, which again is, look at the cycling and, and others, all, we're the lowest game in town. And you, you use your TriSports certificate here, it's a real good value. Our thought leadership, I think uh, Jack had mentioned safety, which is um, of paramount importance to us as well. Obviously, we had a, a number of fatalities last year that we're researching not only last year, but the last 10 years. We've convened a medical committee consisting of a, a, trauma, a trauma doctor, a cardiologist, an ER doc, and others to study all the fatalities over the last several years. Now, we're coming out in earlier in May with our preliminary findings. Well, we'll continue to spend more time researching. It's a very comprehensive project. We need to find family histories, et cetera. And I would tell you, initially, we haven't found any commonality. You know, so far, it's been pretty random. You know, this happens, you know, shoveling snow, you know, cutting the grass in the sack. It just happens, guys. And, and you know, we're you know, trying to see if there's any additional guidelines we can have. We've had a number of suggestions from the industry. You know, most of this has happened uh, in the water. It has been almost exclusively uh, a random cardiac events, but if there is anything that we find from our research, we will communicate out to the community. We view that's uh, certainly our, our responsibility. Um, go back a second here. Um, we continue to grow our webinars. I think we have a, you know, our, our webinars are growing 25, 30% a year. There's a lot of information that comes through that process. And our certification programs continue to grow. We're certifying race directors officials, coaches. We're coming online with two new certification programs this year in timing in the medical community. You know, we talked a lot about leveraging the emotional connection. Okay, you know, we know that we're a good brand. People like to identify themselves as a triathlete. But how else? How do we get deeper? And I think the first point of that emotional connection is at registration. And with, our, with active the leaders and our partner in this, we want to try to provide more services both to the member, the racer, and to the race director. And here's an example where you register for a race and maybe you want to rent a disc wheel, maybe you want to rent a wetsuit, maybe you need a coach. All these at the point of registration when you're committed emotionally. Make it easy. Convenience I'll talk about later. Find it bundling. It's a value to that racer. It doesn't have to struggle to find this information. It's all right there. You'll see this from us in the coming months. Rankings. Um, we know that uh, you know, 
a small but very passionate percentage of our members can't wait to get their rankings issue, which comes out in a few weeks. And in fact, you know, they probably look at our rankings 12, 15 times to see if they change. And if they're one behind where they thought they should be, believe me, we hear about it. So they challenge our algorithms. But I think we have a pretty good ranking program. We're actually going to challenge it this year. We have a number of PhDs trying to bust the system to see if we can do it better. Branding, you know, I, I think we continue to roll out our Team USA programs, but you know, I think part of the reason why our brand is so strong is there's very few places on earth I think I'd rather be, most of us would rather be, than a triathlon finish line. And, and not just at the front, it's often the elation that you see you know, at midnight at Kona or at your local community race where you've got a first timer there that never, ever could have imagined themselves completing any kind of triathlon. I think this video will show some of that. Whoops. The video's coming up. Go back here. Um, we want to continue to enhance our professionalism. Um, and by, with the race director community, we're in the process of rolling out a new sanctioning portal that I've, people tell me is, is fairly dramatic from their sanctioning experience. The old portal, portal was very cumbersome, in and out of screens. You couldn't get any help while we were in the systems. I understand people would just get so frustrated after 10 hours, they'd, they'd walk away and wouldn't sanction. Well, we fixed that. Uh, the new one is much streamlined, all is in one place. You can get real-time help with our staff while you're within the system. It's being beta tested now with a handful of race directors. We rolled out to the entire marketplace in the coming weeks. Um, our expanded certification. Um, we're, we're revamping our entire level two race director certification. We're adding additional uh, youth program modules to not only the race director, but well as into the coaching piece. Uh, we've created a whole pair triathlon curriculum, uh, as well as a level four coaching certification. And we continue to try to evolve our risk management and, and spend a lot of time looking at our various uh, insurance strategies. Here we go. Okay, now again, I talked about our goals, and one of the key goals is to we exist to drive, certainly drive value to a number of constituency groups. Here are a few. Our members. We're redesigning a whole new membership portal so that when you sign on or do your membership, it used to be a 22 screens to 11 screens. We're getting this down to about four screens right now. We have our own personalized dashboard. We believe it will be a much better user experience. We, we're, we're segmenting the marketplace I talked about. Why? So that we don't have to send out generic emails. We're sending out emails and providing information based upon individual needs and race histories. Our race directors, I mentioned the portal. We've launched with Active real-time validation. And what that means is that at registration, you either, if you're a member, you can't put in a bogus number. It validates it if you're a member or not. If you're not a member, you need to buy a one day right there. And what that means is there's no cash on site. So my race director doesn't have to make change, doesn't have to deal with the edit packet pickup. It's convenient for both the member as well as the race director. And I mentioned we're going to vest race directors with these conversions from one days, meaning we're going to provide them with some of the revenue stream. Our clubs. You know, I think we talked about clubs earlier. Again, very important in not only drawing new members, but keeping people in the sport. We continue to provide value with resource guides and webinars, and we're building up a club summit for next year. Our sponsors. Now, you know, important to segment database, not just for us, for our sponsors. Let's say you're a shoe company. We know that a newbie is more likely to buy the lower end shoe. You know, the high end racer might buy, a tra you know, a trainer and a racing flat and different types of shoes. And we've got to talk to each one of those communities with more relevance in order to drive sponsor transactions. So again, the goal with our sport being known as one of the best investment returns for sponsors. Professional account management tools that come from my background, working for an Octagon and SFX, we're trying to instill that uh, in our team and for the industry. And again, it's about 
driving sales. We know we're driving via various codes. We measure that so we can come back and tweak opportunities to try to generate additional returns. Our elites, I think we, everyone knows we have a, the, uh, the World Triathlon Series race in San Diego, which we're investing in. You will see a money list from us here in the coming weeks. It's much like a golf. Our tennis money list, I think, will be pretty interesting for the entire industry to see. Um, we just recently hired a new performance leader that we're excited about. His name is Jonathan Hall, starting uh, in a couple of weeks, who uh, raced in the European Peloton and uh, is a world duathlon champion. So we're pretty excited. I think it's a pretty good quote uh, from Australia up on the screen. Our regions. USA Triathlon has 10 regions that essentially allow us to be force multipliers. They're the arms and legs. You know, we have you know, 55 people or so in Colorado Springs, and we have hundreds of volunteers around. They're doing clinics that are, that, are, that are showing up for camps for underprivileged communities that are very, very important to us. Um, they each won a regional championship, which we're putting some resources behind to enhance, as well as providing them their interests fully aligned, some incentives to drive farther membership. Officials, you know, something that many officials you know, for years, we're essentially traveling on their own dime, probably barely making any gas money for stipend, really is a labor of love. We're increasing the professionalism of our officials so everybody can have a better race experience, a safer race. Increased stipends, increased clinics, and increased training. We'll be launching a formalized um, foundation this year, which will provide us with a, uh, a platform. People, federal people have wanted to donate, or occasionally we'll get a check in the mail, like the organization, but we're setting this up to fund our Olympic program, to fund youth initiatives, diversity initiatives, and our paratriathlon program. I mentioned paratriathlon. For those of you who don't know, it was, will be part of the 2016 uh, Paralympics in Rio. So we're about ramping up our elite program. Currently, we win about 25 to 30 percent of the medals on international championships. We know that more and more countries are investing in we continue to do so, and we're looking forward to, uh, to supporting that program over the next few years. We also want a grant that we're deploying out to run paratriathlon camps. I mentioned youth. Uh, in addition to the Quathlon series, uh, we developed a partnership uh, with the NFL. We're rolling out in six markets this year, uh, and we continue to put resources into a youth program coaching and youth program clinics. Okay, what about Triathlon America? Well, you know, we'd be happy to share any best practices that we can, and I, I certainly applaud some of the research initiatives uh, that you have, and I suggest that uh, we all sit down and talk about our ongoing research regarding membership retention and some of the research that the industry is doing now. Hopefully we can share those insights. And certainly here to collaborate, you have a number of great initiatives and this is, I think, uh, what USA Triathlon relationship will be to Triathlon America. We're, we're very supportive of it. Uh, I think it's terrific for the industry. And again, we're, we're happy to deploy resources to help. OK, so we're talking about the future. And I think that we're all thinking about the future and how we relate to our customers. I think there are three core drivers here I call the three Cs. One is choice. One is customization, and the third is consideration. And what does that mean? Well, from the choice, you know, how do we reach our customers? You know, we know that traditional media is dying. You know, I don't, you know, we know that outside of Triathlete and our magazine, probably no magazines are growing in, in print advertisement. Um, it's certainly much more about the consumer having control of how they receive their messages. Do they click on banners? Do they listen to text? You know, how, how are we engaging with our customers? And they have the power. So what does that mean for us? Well, one reason for a lot of events. I mean, you know, if it's about choice, they want to choose where and when and what discipline they're going to race. Um, having many, many events provides more choice. Having the opportunities to race various format provides choice. And how are we going to customize our products and services for our members? Well, again, I've talked a lot about being relevant on the individual level. You know, we have a, a database counting our one days and annuals, roughly 400,000. 
and we're in the process of looking at the demographics, the psychographics, and the behavior patterns in order to be more customized in our messaging and, and marketing communication strategies to those individual members. Um, the data collection isn't, well, you know, sure, it's for our benefit, but the value exchange is for their benefit, too. The more we know about you, the better we can provide services. Consideration. I mean, there's just, you know, making a choice of what bike to buy or what, or what shoe or what wetsuit. I mean, there's massive information. I mean, how many triathletes do you know actually probably spend more time researching their bike purchase than their car purchase? I mean, I know several. It's kind of astonishing. Um, so what do you do? Well, I think we're trying to be proactive as we can with all of our partners. We're trying to be informative. You know, if, our, if PR Bar, one of our new partners, you know, it's not so much about, you know, what the ingredients are in the bar mix. It's a broader information about nutrition tips. Likewise, you know, all of our sponsors, I would suggest, informing the consumers as much as possible. We do that, try to do that a lot through our partner profiles in our magazine and throughout uh, our, our social media. This last one, you know, sort of interesting. It's the notion that, you know, it used to be that, you know, one, you know, one person who, who liked an event would tell one person, and one person who didn't like an event might tell eight people. Well, with the internet and the blogosphere, that's all changed. It's multiplied. I think, ladies and gentlemen, you know, it's really about the consumers reviewing our products and services, reviewing our races, and I think there's nothing that's going to stop that from happening. So the extent we're looking at various opportunities, like should we have a race review site possibility off of our website, it's really a consumer-driven marketplace, and we're in the process of exploring ways to do that to embrace our various communities that are talking about us through the digital landscape. Okay, the future of the sport. Um, leaner, meaner, and greener, I'd like to say. Um, on the leaner side, you know, it, it, sometimes you know, people say, gee, you know, I, I can run, swim, and bike, but just the whole thing is complicated. I mean, you know, what do I do? You know, how do I, what do I wear? What kind of shoes do I wear? So I applaud things I see in the industry, like the retailer bundles, where you can buy a wetsuit, a bike, a helmet, all in one swoop. I've seen a number of plans for three or four of these for these integrated training centers where essentially you'll show up, your bike is there, your nutritional plan is there, you can get all the metabolic testing right there, there's a 50 meter outdoor pool, and I certainly hope these come to fruition. I think they'll drive our industry as well. I've seen some have integrated race landscapes, and the extent that it just becomes easier to swim, bike, and run, the better. And on the high end, I'd like to see, I'd like to, I'd like to see a concierge service. I think there's some that happen from a travel side where I can really take care of all your needs almost like these vacation services that you see out there in the marketplace. Because again, you know, to break down your bike, put it in a box, get there, figure out what you're going to do. Do you have time to eat? Where do you go? How do you train? Do you swim, swim, swim in beforehand? I would like to see a concierge service that provides that at the high end. Meaner. And what I mean by this is, is you know, we know that, intuitively we know that a lot of people leave our sport, or, or, or stay away from the sport because they get injured. And we want to find ways to, you know, probably one of the biggest abuses we believe is overtraining, for example. And if there's a way to give our athletes and our members healthier, we're looking at ways to do that. One is benchmarking, and benchmarking time distances by body mass index. So we're looking at a number of data to try to come up with some lifestyle healthy tips to keep our people, you know, healthy out there running, biking, and swimming more and more. And finally, they can reach, they can reach their potential. Not everybody is going to be you know, uh, super fast, but we, want it, we know a lot of people to reach their own personal limits of potential and fitness through our platform. Greener, big initiative for us that uh, is reducing our carbon footprint, which we have a partner, Fit Planet, that helps us do that through our events. We're happy to share. We use and recycle as much as we can. And our, our friendly one, of course, is eco-friendly toilets, which is obviously very important, and more at races. So the race experience, um, you know, it is about that emotion. And you know, it's about treating all your customers like rock stars. And this last one here, we need to spend some more time working on. Friends and family, fans, 
you know, I've heard the saying, you know, taking your family to a, to a half or a full or a long day is, you know, getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning and dragging them out there is family abuse. Well, we're going to try to change that. And I applied those, like Rev3 that does some innovative things and others to make it a better experience for your support group. In terms of packing the emotion that I mentioned earlier, uh, I think a lot of that is certainly embodied in the finish line of races around the country. Okay, moving on here. You know, I like to say that, that we're kind of in two businesses. We're in the business of developing Olympians, and we're in the business of making all the age groupers out there feel like an Olympian. And I encourage you all to adopt that same mentality. Finally, you know, this is something that we want to spend more time thinking about. Um, making a better experience for people that we drag to us at race site. You know, hey honey, can I do one more triathlon? If the answer was, God, I'm not getting up at 4 in the morning freezing and waiting all day for maybe sneaking a piece of cold pizza from the, <laughs> you know, how do we make it better for other folks that are supporting us at the race site? You know, are there ways to leverage the, the tracking? You know, we're looking at, you know, GPS built into timing chips so people can watch your performance on a relative basis online and take advantage of all the new media opportunities. And certainly from a spectatorship, you know, again, you know, we see some innovative courses and race designs that are more spectator friendly. And we're looking to visual technologies and screens at events and find a way to lower the cost of producing those images from the race course into a centralized area. Um, a few ideas here we'd love to see developed. You know, we know that people in this room would watch the triathlon channel. You know, we're getting into a world of more and more narrow casting and niche casting. So I would encourage anybody with any ideas to, to come as an industry consortium to think this one through. Um, we want to continue to leverage technology, all the cheapening of the GPS and, and data that comes and displays that we're seeing more and more of. Um, the last one, I'd love to see a reality show where it's not about triathlon. Imagine it was a show about competitive triathletes trying to make an Olympic team, and they have all the issues you have in life. The platform just happens to be triathlon. So we, I've seen a number of proposals for this. We have a couple brewing uh, around our office as well, and be happy to collaborate on this as well. The future of triathlon. Um, now, if we do everything right, <laughs> you know, this is the type a fandom that we want to generate. Now, maybe we won't quite get there, but this is our goal. You know, around the office and around the, you know, our communication tagline has been sharing the win. And that sharing the win is very broadly defined. A win for our sponsors. A win for a first-time triathlete to, to make it to the finish line. Uh, certainly wins on the podium, and it wins that all of our initiatives will be as successful as possible. This is sort of the feeling um, around the office that we're out there to share the wins with the entire community. So in that spirit, uh, we certainly would like to share as many wins as possible uh, here with this group. We're more than happy to collaborate, and I, uh, I thank you for your time. Can we bring down the applause for Robert?